How's it guys? I just want to do a quick video on how I balance crank pulley. So basically I'm putting a 60 minus 2 on my car. So I need to get this crank pulley on. Now granted this is not the best way to do things. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of better ways to do it. But this is just the way I use to get my center positions and everything. I'll show you guys the setup and how I got it and everything. And all that. Um, but I just want to show you guys we're starting here at the TDC point. And about there and you can see the clearance there. Keeping in mind I did this all by sight. No machining, no balancing, none of that fancy stuff. Okay, so basically what I did with this is, um, this one's actually loose. I'm actually going to undo this so I can show you guys. Um, now, the reason I'm using these weird looking screws is these are not going to be on the final car. Like difference here because they're going to throw the weight out. It's important that you basically always use the same fasteners. Now, preferably it's better to weld it, but as you can see here, I'm running my... Um, harmonic dampener right about here now ideally you want this one fastened on this side of the pulley because on this side this thing is it flex, it's a small little rubber section it flexes it, it causes interference but uh, this is the option I've got to work with um, and unfortunately that's, I'm just going to have to deal with that what comes out of it but ideally you want to fasten it to the inner side of the crank pulley um, now I'm going to try to see if I can take this off it's a bit delicate just to show you guys how I did now. You'll see on the inside here I've got a that's a washer. I've got a six millimeter hole, a uh, four millimeter hole around a six millimeter on the pulley. So basically what I did was I uh, took off the pulley. Uh, let me I do it again and I'll show you guys how I did it. You can get all these screws off. Alright, so as you can see the pulley is loose, it's moving around. It's not fastened because you don't want to weld something on and then it's skew and then you can't get it fixed. Getting these things balanced is quite a mission. So um, yeah, so what I did here is I basically measured <coughs> the outer edge of my pulley. So I lied. I said no measuring. There is measuring involved. But the outer edge of my pulley right here. And I measured this diameter. Then I measured this section here. You can see there's a little line line running there. So I basically took the outer side of the pulley, the, the bigger side, and I minus this size off it, and that'll give me a dimension. And then I take that dimension, divide it by two, and it'll give me a section over there and a section over there, which is basically how I got the inner diameter of this. So then what I did was, I flipped this around. Now you want to work precise with these things, because if, it's, if, the, if the sense is too far or too close, it's not really going to work that well. And I measured, I think it was like 8 millimeters or something. It was like, it wasn't 8, was it? Eight. Well, at least for demonstration, let's just say it was 8. It's not 8, but we'll just say that it was 8 millimeters. And then I used this section here to sort of position it around the pulley, more or less to the same side position. Yeah, it was definitely not 8 millimeters, but I used that section to basically hold it like that to the edge of the crank pulley. Let's see if I can do it on the side there. Here's the crank pulley there. And I measured the distance like that. Cool. Then, after the pulley was centered, I put a heavy weight on top of it and I marked the holes here. Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit off. You're not going to get the holes perfect. But mine came pre drilled with three holes. So that's the one I looked for. I looked for a pulley that was more or less in that position. Um, and then I used the pulley that was mounted in and I marked the holes. But I made the holes a little bit smaller so that. Sorry for the bad camera work, guys. I'm just trying to look what I'm doing and film at the same time. And uh, then I just basically position them all till I can get the holes. Then I basically drilled the holes with a, I think it was a 3.8 mil drill bit. And then I tapped it with a, a what do you call that thing? Uh, we tap, basically tapped the holes so the hole has threads. And then I put these little fasteners in there, like that. Keep in mind this can still move around, so I'll show you guys why that is now. And also keep in mind the positioning, it's one over here, one over there, one over there. That's 120 degrees apart. Um, Alright, and then I just want to get this last one on here. I think this one can probably just go in straight. Uh, right, yeah. And then also what I did is, you'll see a nice line there. Over there, where I marked where my TDC position is. Because the closer you are to TDC, the easier it is. But uh, with the positioning, <laughs> I didn't check it properly and I just drilled it and I was like, ah, it's off center. So I need to adjust that on the management. So I'm just basically fastening this in just so it's nice and firm. 
super exciting stuff to watch and then basically now how I did this whole turntable thing here you know you know it stops there but it can turn that way right I basically took the nut oh, not the bolt of the uh, the whole crank wheel on and I fastened at the bottom with another nut over there so this is actually fastened to the nut and then this one here at the bottom is loose so that allows me to turn this thing the way I want. Now you've got to be careful you don't turn it so far that it falls out but I can do easily a full revolution, right, wrong way, full revolution this way and another revolution on that way. So count your revolutions before you do it. The last thing I want is your pulley to fall off. Okay, right. Now then what I did was, I'm just going to get back to my TDC position. We're starting a TDC. This thing is a bit loose. Now I've already kind of set the position so I already know where it needs to be more or less. So I've got a 90 degree square here I'm on a 90 degree surface. And I line that up exactly on the edge. I'll show you guys exactly what happens now. And it's just like check there and about there. Right, and then we're gonna rotate it. So you'll hear it sort of uh, wrong way again. You'll hear it at some point. Okay, you're not hearing it. Oh, there you go. You hear that there. Which means that this is a little bit too far. That's so, so I gotta fasten this a little bit tight. So I'm gonna loosen this a little bit. Real time stuff happening here. No fancy smoke and mirrors. This is how it actually happens in the workshop. Well, my workshop at least. I don't recommend anyone doing this unless it's a last resort, which is pretty much a last resort in my case. And uh, I'll just get this thing off center because I want to show you guys what it does when it's off center. Right? So just tighten that there, tighten that there. And then I'm going to move this in a little bit. About there. Get this back to you. Positioning. But you can see there how the pulley basically runs back and forth and back and this is where the 120 degrees come in. Also with like this nice stubby bolt you can easily turn it like that. It's nice, it works nice and easy. So that's the base. So I know that's my limit. And I see there. Yeah, see there it goes forward. And there it goes back again. So now I know at the lowest end I'm going to move it a bit forward. So and then I'm going to loosen these bolts a little bit. Not too much. You don't want to slide around all over the place. Loosen that. This is why you got the six mil holes on the plate and the four mil on pulley. That gives you some area to play with. And then you're just going to adjust it more or less to where it is. So you might now have moved it this way. And then you'll find, well, it doesn't touch on the other side anymore. Then you just do it again from the other side. Just fastening that nicely there, and then you see oh, it's not touching this side now. So now you move it in. See that? See that massive gap there? So because we got the three, I will now loosen this one here and this one there. Keep in mind you don't want to force because this thing is heavy. You don't want to tilt it out of your vice. And you move this whole plate like that, holding that one in in place. Just a little bit of movement. And basically do that until it's balanced. Now I was balanced, but now I went and unbalanced it. So uh, just want to show you guys a little video on how to basically set this up. And that's actually a lot better already. See this now? I would move this one in until it touches. Some dirt on the plate, but uh, that's pretty much. That's quite close. See there? It little goes up a little bit. Down. So basically your crank pickup will not be able, if the gap is like that, it's not going to pick up the gears. It needs to be like against it, like like there almost. Some dirt on the plate, but see now you can hear it. Dirt on this panel here at the bottom. But yeah, you guys get the, get the hang of it. Um, I want to show you guys real time stuff of how this basically works. And see that it goes down and it goes back up again. Then you'll just basically adjust this thing until you get it right. And then once you finish with that, you're going to fasten it up here. I'm not going to do it now because I need to rebalance this thing now. Doing it for you guys. And then basically, you don't, after you've balanced it, take all three screws. I'll take off one screw, put the proper one in there, weld it on, tack it on, do whatever you want to do with it. Go to the next one, loosen that, 
put the right stuff in, fasten it. Go to the last one, do that, fasten it. Because you're going to take all three out, the whole thing's going to come off again. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, and then okay, basically what I did here, because obviously you can have a little bit of play on the, on the bolt. Let me just take this thing out the pulley and I'll show you guys what I did. Okay, so basically I just added some red tape on there. Normal uh, electrical tape. And um, that just basically takes up all the play. Now, you got to be careful when you put that on. There's no bubbles or folds or anything because it's going to throw it off center. There is a little bit of play on this. So you want it as center as possible. And basically, you just tap it over the washers, put on a bolt, so rock and roll, and you're good to go. So, yeah. Anyway, this is getting a bit long. Just want to show you guys that, and I hope this helps someone if you're busy struggling with the same thing.